okay, so I need to go into the visions about the babies that I saw in the jail, the visions that I had about my pregnancy and what God was saying. Let me, I'm lighting the black because this is stressful shit. Then I got to go into some details about my sister, Shakina, out here in Texas and her involvement. And then I got to go into part three of about Cynthia and the ritual. They're going to try to start coming past, making a lot of noise um, uh, past this bus stop because they're going to try to be drowning out my voice so you can't really hear me. So uh, one of the first visions that I had of a baby when they were saying I was not pregnant in the back of the Montgomery County Jail and poisoning me, I had given birth. I told God that I was scared. I was scared. I was scared to give birth to the baby because I think it's going to hurt because they're not giving me no medical care. And if it starts coming out, I told God that I was scared because I felt like it was going to hurt my vagina and all of that because I didn't get an epidural and I got an epidural with Mel B. And then when I went to sleep, I gave birth in my sleep, but not actually birth, but in the spirit. God let me feel, see what it'll feel like. So I wouldn't be scared. And I gave birth, um, Shakina, my sister, in a vision. I went to sleep that night after I told God I was scared and I had a vision. And my little sister was calling me into a bedroom. And I was in the living room, and I had been walking around uh, pregnant, but I was so small, and I had been carrying myself as if I was not pregnant. And my little sister knew that I was. And so my little sister started calling me, and she was, like, calling me as if I was in danger. And she was calling me, saying, Andrea! She was like, Andrea! Andrea! And I heard her, and I was like, it was a real innocent voice. Like, you know, when you got a little sister and she's innocent, like, it wasn't the same voice of the sister that thinks she doing it big out here in Texas and setting me up with these folk. You know what I'm saying? Nah, she had, in this vision, she had humbled herself, and she was my little sister again. Like, not the little sister, like, you got to be a child, but you know what I'm saying? The innocent one. Like, even if you're an adult, you can still be innocent. You don't got to be wicked and lying and shit. And so, like, God said she was lying when she said that she could not feel it. And God said that you could see it moving in my stomach when I got out of the jail and I went to her house. So in this vision that I had of, of my sister in the jail, she started calling me, Andrea, Andrea. And then I heard her. I was in the living room, and I started walking, and I didn't know what she was calling me like that for. And I came in like, what? Like, you know, like I was like irritated, like in the vision, I'm like, what? Like, what? What? Why are you calling me like that? Because she was calling me like I was in danger and I was chilling. And she was like, Andrea, Andrea. Hold on, I need this block. And I walked into the uh, room and my little sister was lying down in the dark. And then my sister said, Andrea, Andrea, you're in labor. She said, Andrea, you about to have the baby. And I didn't know that I was in labor. I had no idea. And I couldn't feel a thing. And I was very small. My stomach was like damn near flat. And she said I was about to have a baby. And then God made me get on my knees and then put one of my hands down as if you finna get on all fours. And then he put my hand up under my vagina. And then this little baby came out. And it was so small that it could fit into both of my hands put together, like close together. And it was, just, it was that small and it was very skinny. And it came out with dark stuff all over the skin. And it had no umbilical cord. 
there was no umbilical cord attached. So when I held it in my hand, I did not have an umbilical cord attached. It was uh, coming out of my body or, or the placenta. Um, I don't know. The placenta could have still have been in my body. I don't know. But the baby was covered in something very brown and blackish all over the body from head to toe. It, it, you would think the baby was a dark-skinned baby, but it was something else on the skin of the baby. And then, it was, there was no umbilical cord, and I just went, and like I held it in my hand, and it wasn't moving. And then I said, oh my God. And when it came out, like, it just kinda, like, it just kind of felt like when a man have a big dick and then he go up in you and you go, uh, it felt like that, but going out. So instead of going in, it felt like that going out. And it just felt like, like that. And I didn't scream. I didn't cry. I didn't go, uh, I didn't do that either, but it came out and it did not hurt at all. And it, I, it just came out, that's all. And it didn't hurt, I didn't feel not pain, I don't think I tore at all. And I never had felt that because I got the epidural with Mel B and I was, Mel B was six pounds, and seven ounces I believe. And that thing right there, child, I was hurt. And I felt them contractions, but with this baby, in this vision, see they coming through speeding, and it's a red light right there. So they ain't got no business to be speeding that quick to, to a red light. They trying to cover up what I'm telling y'all. And because they know that God, the Holy Spirit, is going to expose things. And I was saying that Cynthia cannot tell y'all because Cynthia took an oath and they'll cut Cynthia's tongue out. And Austin can't tell y'all because Austin took an oath and they'll cut his tongue out. And Joseph too. But God said that Andrea didn't take the oath to say and denounce him. And Andrea can tell. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm doing. So y'all going to have to listen to me because I did not take the oath. They is not going to be able to tell y'all. Only thing that Cynthia and everybody going to be able to do is get actually just see that they did this when the truth get out pretty much and so my sister uh was right there in the vision with me Shakina and the baby just came right out and I he didn't fall on the ground or anything when he came out I grabbed him and held him in both hands. Oh, I don't know if it was a boy or girl. And held it in both hands. And the baby was like laying on the side. And it wasn't moving. And then I wasn't tripping. I wasn't tripping. But when I seen how small it was, I was like, aww. And I just said, I hope the little thing alive. Because it was a little thing. You know, like it was a little thing. That's how small it was. It was a little thing. It was big enough to survive. And so that's why I was like, oh, I hope the little thing alive. And then all of a sudden it started squirming. Just like real quick, like, oh, it was awake. I don't know, the baby might have been asleep. Cause it just came right on out. And then when I was like, I hope it's alive, it started squirming a little bit. Like it started like kicking and moving like a normal little baby. And I was like, oh shit. And it didn't have no umbilical cord attached to the baby or me. And it looked a little red a little bit now, like a little like it came out looking black. And then once it started squirming, well, I hope it's alive and turns on the side and squirming. Then I seen it was red. And then I went to Shakina and put the baby on Shakina and she took it and put the baby on her shoulder. And I said, I'm calling 911. And I ran out the room. I ran out the room to call 911, to call the ambulance. And then I woke up not understanding what was going on and how, why I gave birth in my sleep, but I was still pregnant in the jail. And I had asked God, I said I was scared to give birth by myself with how they doing me. And I am scared, 
but now I'm not scared. I'm not scared of the pain. I'm scared that I can't give birth. I'm afraid that it's never just going to come out. And I know I'm smoking and I feel like that's lowering the HCG levels, hurting the baby. It's still moving. But, you know what I'm saying? That's my concern is that I'll never actually contract and start, uh, feel like I'm having some contractions right now, actually. But um, not like hurtful contractions, but just a little tightness in my back. But it, to me, I just feel tired. Like I just need to lie down. I, it don't feel like I'm in labor, you know, like how I was with Melby. So I would not really know with how small I am unless I felt the same pain that I felt with Melby. Then I'd be like, okay, I'm in labor. But being that I ain't feeling no pain like that, then I'm like, damn, I think I need a doctor to help me to give birth to it. So I'm confused about that vision. But I know how long I've been carrying what all my body been through so I can understand a baby coming out in that condition with no umbilical cord because I've been carrying it a long time. And then so I had another vision after that uh, where I said to my dad, I was like, um, I called my dad. No, before I called my dad, this black woman had came and she was like, everybody know you pregnant now and I wanted to go out and drink and they was the other girls was partying and had the little martinis and I had wanted an apple martini and or something like that or some lemonade it was like a little lemonade looking alcoholic beverage and I wanted to drink it and the black woman that uh, said she knew that I was pregnant she said uh-uh she said you need a doctor she said, so you can get that, give birth to that baby. And she said, and then you can party. She said, we got to get you a doctor. You got to get to a doctor. And then you can party because I wanted to party. And as y'all can see, I'm on there shaking my booty. And I'm ready to party. And all that because it's been in me three years. And I ain't been able to do that because I knew I was pregnant. And I, and that's why y'all see me dancing a little bit. And I was like, ooh, 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 I can't do that. Ooh, it hurt a little bit. Ooh, because I'm, I, I want to do it, but I can't because of the, the little baby in me. And then so um, the woman had said, she said, uh, you need a doctor. And after she said that, I called my dad. And it switched over to the same room, but something had happened, and it was a future and an uh, event, uh, like something had happened to where I had given birth. And then I called my dad, screaming, ecstatic. Andrew, the one that I was calling, telling him, Daddy, they in here positing me, and I'm pregnant, and they lying about it, and they denying me medical care. And he was the only one answering the phone for me. Larissa and Shakina was not answering, and Shannara was not. No, Shannara calling did answer the phone for me a couple times, and she did put some money on my books once. And Andrew put some money on my books, but they was opening the commissary and poisoning the commissary. And that, that, and. I called my family, I called Andrew, and I told him that they was doing that to me. And I called uh, my grandmama and told her, and I called, uh, I think told Shannara to tell Troy what they was doing because I figured that if Troy knew what they was doing, that Troy would definitely make sure that they stopped poisoning me, but it didn't stop and they kept doing it. Up until I left out of the jail, they kept poisoning me, even after they had got the doctor to uh, confirm that I was pregnant with Charge Nurse Michelle with a Doppler machine uh, ultrasound device. And she wanted them to put me on the ambulance, but he said no because there was a fetal heart monitor. He didn't want to be on the news with them, with knowing that what they were doing to me in the back of the jail and blame it all on him because he was the doctor. And I kept screaming for him, and then he was saying he didn't have to see me because the nurses were saying that I wasn't pregnant. And I, and then they found out I was through Charge Nurse Michelle, took me to Conroe Regional, lied about it, brought me back, and then kept poisoning me. And I was back there screaming up until they released me. I was screaming up until August 22nd, 2019, the day that they released me. And I was screaming, they back here murdering my baby inside of me the whole time. That's what I kept screaming all throughout the jail. Anybody that was incarcerated with me from the time of September 18th, 2018 uh, to August 22nd, 2019 can confirm, yes, Ms. Jones was screaming all through the jail that she was pregnant and that they was poisoning her and that they was killing her baby in her and saying she wasn't pregnant. All the inmates will tell you that was incarcerated 
been brought in and out of there will tell you that. And that they kept me housed by myself, poisoning me. That's what I was claiming and screaming throughout the jail. And so I had called my daddy and said, Daddy, I said, I gave birth to a baby. I said, it could, no, I said, Daddy, I, I said, Daddy, yeah, I gave birth to a baby that could fit in the shoe. And he was like, kind of like, oh, like, okay, like, he was okay. And there was some people that was acting salty. And then I had seen something, I seen Amigo singing one of my songs that I had wrote while I was in the jail. And I'm like, what the hell is a rap group doing singing a gospel song that it was, I, I write like hip hop gospel, I write gospel R&B, you know, stuff like that. I make gospel sound good, you know what I'm saying? I make gospel sound better than some of these hip hop songs out there. A lot of songs that I write, I write to God. And um, people will think that I'm writing it to a lover or something and then and, and not know that it's really a, a, another form of praise. And so um, they was on TV and they were singing my song. And I was like, that's my song. That's my song. I wrote that song, you know. And I don't know what they were doing witchcraft, you know, trying to trick me. Like they are actually uh, fuck with me. But this is what I saw, and it was all three of them. It was Quavo, Takeoff, and Offset on TV, and they were singing my shit that I wrote. And then the woman, there was a woman that said, I'm about to start getting you shows. I'm going to start booking you, Andrea Jones, to have performances, and so you can get you some money doing what you love to do. And I was so happy. And then uh, I had another vision of a little baby. I was riding in the back seat of a car, and this little baby could not fit in the car seat. It was too small. And there was a man, a black man, driving the car in the front. And I was, I don't, I never seen this man before. And I was in the back seat holding this little baby that was as tiny as it was the one that I showed y'all that I gave birth to in the vision. And it was so small that I had to hold it because there was not a car seat in the world that could hold this little baby. It was that small. And uh, it was wrapped up in a little blue blanket and then it was so small and cute that you could put it in your little coach bag. But you had to be very careful with it because it was a little miniature baby. God said, it's a miniature baby. That's what he said, it's a miniature baby. It's a baby, but it's a miniature baby. It was all the way developed but it was a miniature sized baby and it was, it could survive. It could breathe on its own. It was good, but it was just a miniature baby. And I'm gonna have to do a part two on this one because my storage is full and load this. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all about the visions of the baby before I go back into the ritual, the third part of the ritual that Cynthia and them was doing on me and this baby, or me and my pregnancy up in the jail. But I'm trying to figure out what God is talking about, about the twins what twins and I had visions of twins as well so uh